everyone, and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23. I'm not going to be able to upgrade to 0.23.5 because uh, Remote Tech isn't going to be updated until 0.24. So I'm going to be sticking with the versions of the mods that I have right now. At, and uh, uh, there are other reasons why I have to, uh, probably because I, I don't know how the fact that the KSC has been relocated to Kennedy, Kennedy Space Center in uh, in the new uh, real solar system uh, would change things. So it's at a different latitude and longitude. Uh, I probably I could switch it back. Well, I don't know if there's actually a lo real location at the latitude and longitude of the KSC. So anyway, uh, but those that's all side issues. We're gonna be sticking with the regular mods that I've been using so far. And, yeah, so this is the Force City Launcher, what was I gonna do? I took those fairings off for a reason, I was just chatting away. Oh, I wanted to add some, some solar panels, and perhaps some more electricity, because, because we are going to want to get this to the moon this time. We are aiming for the moon, the moon is in the right place, and I need to be able to maintain enough power on this. Now that's not great, but uh, we need more power somehow. Maybe I can move some things around here. I don't know if this thing will really survive because when we did our test we didn't... Uh, we weren't able to bring it back down safely. So that's an open question. Yeah, well, we'll have to see. This is going to be the toughest mission so far, obviously. Probably the thing weighing most on my mind is uh, re-entry at the speeds that we'd be returning from the moon. We don't really have a way to decelerate very well. So we're going to have to probably go around uh, Kerbin slash Earth twice. Uh, so we'll be shallow in our uh, in our re-entry and uh, have some of the speed be bleed off then orbit one time again and then come in that's the plan okay should I put boosters on this thing I, I, I think we'll keep it as is it worked fine uh, yeah we'll keep it as is maybe a little bit less hydrazine would be well then we, we might need that in order to get our orbit correct. So, yeah, let's keep it as is and aim it for the moon this time. Alright, so see you at a launch pad. Okay, so here we are again. SAS on. Taking a look at our situation with respect. Let's target the moon. And this time it's not giving my ascending and descending node early on. But you can see we're in the right place and we're going to be heading north all right uh, throttle up and blast off definitely could use a little bit more power in this uh, at this point but like I said we'll keep it this way for now and then uh, uh, make further assessments after this mission So we'll be aiming for, what is it, 66.5 degrees uh, this way, and uh, inclination of 23.5. In the new version of uh, Real Solar System for 23.5, uh, version 23.5, oh, funny that the version number uh, matches the inclination of the Earth, but anyway, uh, in version uh, 23.5, uh, Real Solar System has the real earth texture so you can identify real land masses and all that um, and also has adjusted all the other planets to have this the inclination to uh, to simulate earth's axial tilt before in, in this version we only have the moon uh, tilted like that but uh, in the new version the entire system is tilted like that so that's uh, that's interesting uh, I wish there was a way to have axial tilt without having to do that, but 
you know, uh, whatever works at this point. Okay, so we're gingerly getting our act together here. I like the new version of visual enhancements with the volumetric clouds. Yeah, the clouds move a little bit fast. I guess they move a little bit fast because it's the real solar system and they aren't quite adjusted to the real solar system. I don't know for sure. But uh, but yeah, th that was very nice to see. Punching through the volumetric clouds. Tank life support didn't actually require any changes. Uh, so it's just as is, but uh, with a caveat that if you're going to be time warping in the uh, in in the tracking station or in the main screen, uh, you won't be able to see the tack life support monitor. So you won't necessarily know if your kerbals are in dire peril uh, when you're time warping. So that's the only caveat. Otherwise, tack life support works. Both the major part mods, uh, oh, I'm not uh, tilting enough here, uh, KW Rocketry and uh, Nova Punch work, so they're all nice and neat. I dumped the fairings and fuel tanks on them though, so I, I, I can't imagine that those would uh, create any glitches, but that's, that's something I always do to save space, because when you've got st stretchy tanks and procedural fairings. Whoa, 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 hey, 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 hey. Settle down. Anyway, uh, you don't really need the fairings and fuel tanks in in the mod, in uh, Nova Punch and KW Rocketry. And of course now we have 3.75 meter tanks in default in the stock parts, so that's another thing. Okay, first stage separation is good, and we continue on our way. Oh, uh, we can drop the fairings here, not uh, up there. Ooh, lots of sound on that one, made me a little bit worried for a sec there. I think we've got this action group, but I'll just activate it like this. One of the very essential mods that doesn't seem to have been updated is actually the Soviet engines pack. Some of the en other engines pack, ex uh, except for KW Rocketry and Nova Punch, haven't been updated. Like AIES, I don't know if it's been updated. It may be compatible without updating, but I'm not sure yet. So that's that's a little bit of a trip up uh, as far as. Um, making sure we have the engines available. They, uh, I guess they should be compatible. I mean, in theory, there's nothing about the new update to Kerbal Space Program that should break them. But you know how theory works with these mods sometimes. Uh, things can be unexpectedly difficult. So, so yeah. Uh, would like official word that they really do work with this. And, you know, official word is only can only come from the mod creator themselves. So. Okay, first lighting of the third stage is good. We're partly trying to fix our inclination right now. Okay, we're about to cross our apoapsis, but that's that's good because we want to uh, sort of have this part of the burn, this third stage burn, half before and half after kind of thing. 
won't be quite half half, but still. Really need to get that inclination a little bit better, though. I wasn't uh, paying as much attention to that as I should have been. Looking more at the performance of my first two stages and being a little bit underwhelmed by them. They didn't do quite as much as I needed them to. Okay, not quite as good an orbit as I wanted to get, but 280 by 200, 21.3 degrees inclination, and that should be okay. I'm going to prepare one of the college rocket sets for the second burn of the third stage, but we'll have to plot for that. Now, so we're 1.7 degrees off, that's a little bit much but I don't think we can burn out of either one of our nodes in order to correct that. Uh, no, no. Here we go again, busy business around Kerbin slash Earth here. All right. Uh, that's probably not gonna encounter it at all. Oh no, they're there, there. Because of our inclination, I think uh, we've got this uh, weird resulting... Oh? Okay, that's not fair. Okay, well, at least we have enough fuel for it. Well, this will have us crashing back into Kerbin. Okay, so it's like that. I don't really care if we come back to Kerbin in a polar orbit or not. That doesn't matter. Oh, this is too finicky. But uh, that's good, I guess. So that means that we can use the RCS to fine tune it. Alright, well, I'll, I'll configure for this uh, Kerbin periapsis 118 kilometers. That's not in the atmosphere, but uh, like I said, RCS can handle that. Our moon per okay, well, our moon periapsis is a little bit high. Let's see if uh, which way we should mess things up in order to get that lower. Probably the other way. Honestly, the ones with the free return trajectory seem to be closer to the moon than any of the others, anyway. But very finicky. Of course, with the new maneuver node system, we could use the scroll wheel to mess with this. Right now, the scroll wheel just adjusts our zoom. I think I'm just going to take this. So, Moon Periapsis, 12,000 kilometers. And we'll have to mess with that, uh, perhaps uh, that uh, mid-course plane change, in order to get that closer. All right, now, I think we have a very small reaction wheel on here, so I can slowly, or I guess I could use the remote tech computer. Yeah, the remote tech computer can turn us to a node. tough to say how long this particular maneuver will take. I mean, 3,000 meters per second we're talking about here. I guess... Whoa, what was that all about? You know, I, I don't want it doing anything crazy here. Okay, stop that. Uh, SAS back on, please. I don't 
like this whole spinning thing. Okay, bye bye flight computer. Uh, bye bye flight computer. Slowly getting it to the maneuver node and getting ready to fire the Alledge rockets. Okay, let's get our look at the fuel flow. All right. Here we go. We clearly have enough fuel. Okay, hey, gotta take a good look at how things are shaping up, otherwise I can't cut the engine at the right time. Remember, limited relights and only 100% power. I can't throttle this engine. So... I could have set the computer to do it, but... Wow, we're off. Okay. Well, we got something. <laughs> Alright, uh, looks like we have about 138 meters per second left in this stage, so let's... Let's get rid of this maneuver and see what we need to do. And... We do have a relight, so that's good. And I, what I want to do is do it at the... Uh, descending node and I'm going to correct the fact that it's descending you know something like that is probably right okay so let's pretend that this is going to work alright so I'm just going to do this maneuver and so to hope for the best. We've got some kind of moon encounter. The question is where we've got one that will be easy, easy to return from or difficult to return from. Okay. Uh, let's prepare our second set of Olage rockets. And time up a bit. Okay. All right, well, that's the end of that stage. And so I'm going to decouple. And our probe is away. Okay, so it's just our probe now. Happy little probe still turning very slowly but I don't want this maneuver right now I wanna see what really will get us to the moon <laughs> um, that might be a little bit difficult to, you know our moon periapsis is 300 kilometers right now and it's gonna shoot us into you know, interplanetary space but I like the 300 kilometer part of that so hard to figure out how to manage our return trajectory because we can't really see what trajectory we have getting there okay well this is somewhat of a return trajectory if it actually comes about but I can't see it once I let go of the the manipulator Okay, well let's say, let's say, that's a pretty distant periapsis. Uh, 
Oh, heck. Let's time warp a little bit to see... Oh, first let's connect up with, uh, with GSTAT. So, GSTAT 1, activate. Um, let's switch to GSTAT to make sure it knows all about all this. Okay, and unknown target should be switched to Forseti. Hopefully that is us. Okay, back to the Forseti. Let's time warp a bit now and then see if we can uh, plot a decent maneuver node. Nope, it just doesn't want to settle that that maneuver down. If I do this change, yes, we get a free return trajectory and we could probably pull that in. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe that's not sufficiently in front. It's supposed to be a figure eight pattern, right? So I don't know if I'm coming up in front of the moon very, very decisively. But uh, the problem is it pulls my moon periapsis away. Oh, that's not bad, huh? Yeah, but it's, it's got this uh, 47,000 kilometer moon periapsis. Right now we've got 166 kilometers. And I'd rather take the 166. So maybe I'll just have to make an adjustment once we reach the moon. I hope I'm not uh, condemning this little probe to interstellar space, uh, interplanetary space. That could be interesting, but we have no way of communicating with it. But yeah, so I'm gonna call this sort of a maneuver node fail. Uh, partly because I didn't burn properly uh, when I made my burn for the moon. But also partly because it's just jittery like this and I didn't expect it to be jittery like this. Okay, we're now definitely connected through G-STAT. Our electric charge situation is fine. Uh, cancel that, not fine. Um, it's diminishing a little bit. There's plenty of... Let's see... Can we turn this so that more solar panels are facing the sun? Maybe. I guess I could turn this uh, constantly on when off because it's just this dish. This is really irritating. Maybe I can try plotting one more time. I can sort of see the ghost of the path that I want to take. It's just not the real thing. It's not really the return I wanted. I was looking for that because it's it's not low enough. And it'll once again put us very high above the moon. Alright, whatever. I'm just going to fix it once we get around the moon instead of trying to mess with it here. We're definitely not approaching for a free return trajectory here. This is... This is a weird sort of thing that we've got going. But I didn't... Like I said, uh, on my burn... my On my translunar injection, I didn't burn quite correctly. And that was because, well, I didn't have much throttling ability. Should have timed it. Should have just had... I just should have just had the computer aim for the node and uh, burn for the correct amount of delta V. Uh, somebody informed me that you could just type in delta v in here and it works, so... Should have just d done that, but no, I have to do it the hard way. Don't need to set it as a target at this point. Okay, we're in the moon's sphere of influence. We're gonna be ejected into interplanetary space here. Ah. <sighs> 
Okay, so you remember all those times along the way where I said, well, I don't really want to do that burn because it'll set me too far away from the moon? Well, it looks like I should have just taken those. Now it will cost me even more and it has the same result. Uh, moon periapsis is 16,500 uh, kilometers. And uh, yeah, we'll have a Kerbin periapsis inside Kerbin's atmosphere. But it's going to cost me a lot more than it uh, would have anywhere else. So, then Mr. the brakes. Uh, do we have enough Delta V to do this burn? That's another question. I'm not sure. Okay. Try to get this right. It's RCS. Let's see. Oh, I've got the tiny little RCS thrusters. Oh, how cute. This is gonna take forever. At least our electric charge held out this time. I'm thinking at this point maybe I should uh, just uh, go around and wait till apoapsis to uh, burn further. And maybe that will be more efficient. Uh, I don't know if I have enough hydrazine left to really complete this. It would be a close call. Let's see. Well maybe. Maybe. Now at this point I'm going to go around. I don't think we have any time constraints on us, so... Yeah. So I'll wait until we get to Apoapsis in uh, 11 days it'll be. And at that point I will do the rest of the burn and get into Kerbin's atmosphere. For now, this will have to do. Let's do some science. What biome are we over right now? Log gravity data. East far side crater. Oh, excellent. Let's just transmit that data. Sort of sending little chunks, but okay. Uh, where is the moon? That's Earth. How can I have so much trouble finding a body that we're supposedly in the sphere of influence of? Well, uh, it should be our prograde vector, right? Let's go and find our prograde vector. Hmm. Doesn't seem to be there. Whatever. Uh, let's keep going. Is it just really dark or something? My moon has disappeared. Oh, wait, uh, oh, I don't know. It's gotta be a dark spot somewhere, I'm sure. Okay, anyway, uh, let's see if we're on, uh, some other biome now. No. But, uh, we'll still get, uh, 16 science for some reason. I think we didn't send as much science as we should have. Let's just send that bit, too. I don't know why we get this whole choppy science thing, but oh well. Our electric charge seems to be diminishing quite a lot now. Okay, uh... We're moon... We've got the readings, we need the samples. Uh, oh yes, we need the data first. We're not going to get the low orbit readings. We should have done that, but, well, we uh, wouldn't be able to... You know what? 
Ah, uh, we should. So uh, uh, next time I'll have to send uh, another mission that doesn't return to Kerbin to get the low orbit readings. Um, hopefully we'll get these uh, samples in, but but we can do the readings without returning the vessel back to Kerbin. Land is that's tempting too. Okay, samples. Oh, 200 units. Okay, samples for 450 science. We really need to get this stuff back. Collecting particles in high orbit of moon. We need to return these back to mission control for study. So let's keep that data. And we don't need the data recording to continue. Let me just uh, make sure we don't... Uh, oh, 150 units worth of data. Um... And I'm pretty sure we've already done it, but let's just continue. Yeah, we've done that. Okay, so proceed to periapsis around the moon, and hopefully at that point we'll actually be able to see the moon. Okay, we've got a lot of electric charge diminishment here. That doesn't bode well for our ability to... Well, there must be some sort of solar panel not pointing in the right way kind of situation. Yeah, we're, we're sort of pointing in an odd angle. Let's get that right. No, that would have been fine. SAS, why are you not doing your job? Okay, right there, SAS. Right there. Okay. Now, where is the moon? We just picked a very... Oh, there it is. Finally. Sheesh. Well, you can see why it was tough to locate. It's very much shadowed. But this is as close as we're going to get to it, I think, or pretty much. Alright. Well, nothing much to look at. Um, I guess we could probably do another gravity reading. Let's see. Highlands, yes. Transmit that. Well, now that takes a lot of electric charge, huh? Oh, is that... no, that's not the data recorder. I switched that off. Yeah, now it's now it's taking electric charge. Last time it didn't. Okay. Let's see if this is a different biome. And I gotta take that 1.9 units right now. And how about now? Let's try a different box. Nope, still Highlands. Well, let's get uh, to where we're about to leave and see if we can't get a different biome there. Midland Craters, excellent. Uh, transmit that. Well, this won't be a total waste, so... Good, good thing there, but uh, I would like to get that 450 science back.
Okay, I'm gonna assume that we're not going to be hitting any more biomes uh, as we go out. We'll probably be about the same angle from the moon, so I think that's a fair bet. Our electric charge seems to be recharging, so let's continue out into Kerbin Sphere of Influence. Okay, so we're going to go around and hit our apoapsis, and let's let's just quickly see what it would take and our apoapsis to dip our orbit back down into Kerbin's atmosphere. 70, wow. Uh... You know, maybe it would have been better to do it around the moon instead. I'm not getting any sort of happy feelings about this. Yeah, I think we could have used the moon's help. Right now, this is e much more than what we needed when we were around the moon. So the moon was actually helping us out instead of hurting us. I don't think we're gonna get this back. We'll try anyway. Gotta be careful with time warping. Of course, the time warp uh, notches have been adjusted. So, they're a lot faster than normal. Okay, well, uh, give or take 20 minutes will make a difference in this case. Let's get to our maneuver. Well, I wonder if a gravioli thing could be done out here. No. In space high over Kerbin's water. Not really helpful. Okay, get uh, time warp back on. Well, we're 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 gonna have a little bit of space junk here, let's face it. Well, and that's that. Our probe is stranded in space. Really, uh, this is the first one that we've stranded like this, isn't it? Quite an orbit. But uh, nothing we can do about it. So we're going to have to redesign this thing. But we have gotten some more signs, so we'll just leave this out here and take a look at our tech tree to see if there's anything we could do that might, might prevent this from happening again. Alright, so see you there. As you can see, we've got a formidable 527 science here now. And so, we've got possibilities. I'm hesitant to open up... Now, this will have a lot of new rockets that might be helpful. Uh, especially small rockets like... that. Well, I don't know if it's physically small, but... You know, some of these could be uh, useful in an upper stage. A pair of RL-10A3s, for instance. Uh, we have, we're using one of them in our third stage. But that would make it uh, possible to make a heavier third stage. Not that we need that, actually. But... You know, most of them I don't need. The reason I'm not unlocking it, though, is because I don't want to hit any more of the... Well, in this case, there's only this one, and that wouldn't be too bad. But I don't want to unlock any of the fuel tanks until I've got all the support technologies for them. So, uh, so that they will be able to be resized to a level that I actually want. Hmm. Cylindrified liquid fuel tanks would be interesting. This is not bad. Better thrusters. I should look into what tech level I'm at right now on some of these parts. Some of them might be upgradable. And staging. Okay. Now, if we wanted to, we could land something on the moon, I guess, and transmit the data from there. Make a little mooner lander. That would be interesting. 50 signs for that sort of uh, equipment. Lights. Uh, somebody wants lights, right? Uh, yeah, that's, that's a thought, but that won't get us any more science. See, the reason I'm not unlocking the lights is because I 
don't get any more science out of it and we need to focus at this point. Hmm. I think we can redesign what we've got based on our existing parts, but I'm going to unlock early landing legs because I think we can do that lander mission and we'll need these for that purpose. So let's do that. Advanced landing legs, even rover wheels there, wow, okay. So unlock that, and how about a radial mount? Oh, that's 500 science, wow, that's expensive stuff. I think the solution is probably going to be to put some boosters on the on the on the Forseti launcher and doing that will allow the third stage to just be a uh, lunar transit stage or lunar transit stage and then have that transit stage relight around the moon to bring it back I think that's probably the best solution so if we can get the base stages the first and second stage to really do the entire orbit then we'll be able to reserve the third stage to return our mission back home Okay, so that's that's gonna be my plan. I don't think I need to unlock any new technologies to to really do that. So on that note, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.